All these types of homicide are usually carried out by foreigners, immigrants or those from immigrant families. They found their wives unable to obtain hospital beds in childbirth, their children unable to obtain school places, their homes and neighbourhoods changed beyond recognition, their plans and prospects for the future defeated. At work, they found that employers hesitated to apply to the immigrant worker the standard of discipline and competence required of the native-born worker. Any of that sound familiar? Then immigrants coming to this country saw a marvellous chance to start using our relaxed approach to undertake money laundering. Because once again, immigrants find that British traditions are easy to exploit for their own ends. Again, it's a very strange thing. But when news emerges of the stabbing of two police officers, one of them a woman, by a frenzied knifeman the other day, nobody hearing the news seriously imagined for a moment that the perpetrator would turn out to be called Dave Smith or Peter Johnson. We all knew that it was most likely that the man who had to be subdued with tasers and batons because he was in such a homicidal rage in a public place at six o'clock in the morning would either be a crazed Muslim or perhaps an African or Caribbean with mental health problems. Immigrants who arrive with little wealth, or indeed no, no money at all, are as likely to turn to crime as they are to start exciting new companies. Snatching Rolex. Just draw up a list, compare the number of immigrants who are featured in the newspapers who have started exciting new companies which have benefit to society and have succeeded commercially, and set those against the ones who have been convicted of defrauding other people or snatching bags. I'm not at all sure that the number of um, immigrant entrepreneurs is significant. Let's look at another way that foreign communities in London can affect a quiet area like the one in which I live. Four people have been convicted recently of dumping building waste in Epping Forest which is a dreadful way to treat it. In other words, immigration will not help ease pressure on the shortage of staff in the National Health Service. It is causing the pressure. Immigrants find that British traditions are easy to exploit for their own ends. Then immigrants coming to this country saw a marvellous chance to start using our relaxed approach to undertake money laundering. You could do it without any identification, in fact. They found their wives unable to obtain hospital beds in childbirth, their children unable to obtain school places, their homes and neighbourhoods changed beyond recognition, their plans and prospects for the future defeated. At work, they found that employers hesitated to apply to the immigrant worker the standard of discipline and competence required of the native-born worker. Any of that sound familiar? Their art, if it can be called art, was limited to uh, a few scratches on rocks. There's one from Southern Africa, about 50,000 years old, in which a series of lines, a bit like a hashtag sign, have been carved. All this affects everybody in Britain, for opening a bank account or selling a house is immeasurably more difficult these days due to the fact that foreigners have been exploiting Britain's trust-based banking system for money laundering and fraud. Other communities, of course, in this country, have different customs. Some abstain completely from intoxicating liquor and settle disputes with knives rather than fists and boots. In some countries, the use of guns is common 
and when people move to Britain from those countries, they sometimes continue this tradition too on the streets of London and other British cities. It was noticeable that between two thirds and three quarters of the students in the SEND department were either foreign, in that their families had arrived in the country over the last few years, or belonged to visible minorities. The most severely disabled, those with both uh, profound learning difficulties and also extensive physical problems, being confined to wheelchairs and so on, invariably belonged to those categories. It was clear to me that many of them had actually been brought to Britain from Turkey, Yemen, Pakistan and so on, because the families knew that the young people had complex needs and would not be properly treated in their own countries. Anybody who is wondering why their tax bill is soaring and national insurance contributions being increased need look no further than this for the explanation. The new arrivals will not have any of those things and they will need to be provided for them. The money to pay for this must be taken from the existing population, most of whom will be working and paying taxes. This means that taxes will have to be increased to pay for all the new arrivals. My heart sinks. This is partly because I don't particularly want this country to be even more of an international hub than it already is. But also because I don't trust anything either of those two slippery customers say, especially when it relates to immigration. <laughs>